اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session I'm going to look into how to use Microsoft Excel to assess any data entry error or a respondent misconduct. For example, you have entered your data in Microsoft Excel. Now these are my variables here, all of them, each one of them from the questionnaire. And this is my data for each respondent. Now each row represents a respondent here or a questionnaire that is filled by the respondent. Now, I would like to assess whether I have made an error while entering the data. So in order to do this, let's say the first step is to identify the minimum and maximum values for each of your variable. Let's say, how do we do the minimum value? Minimum. So I've given this a heading minimum. And then when you are writing in Excel and you are calculating something, you need to start with the equal to sign that is the formula now minimum that is M I N now what is the range click here number one number two now you can have an array of the values now what is the range of age here from A here column A to so A to here up until 342 so look at this a2 342 so a342 is the row number just press enter and it will give you the minimum age what's the maximum age is equal to type in max click here and now again you can simply type it because now you know the range a2 to a342 closing parentheses press enter and the maximum is 59 so there doesn't seem to be an issue here now I want to do this for all the columns here so shall I type it again and again well no you don't need to what you do is simply come over here look at this dot here and if you hover your mouse around here it will make a plus sign now drag it up until the last column here it is now these the other values are calculated so I'm not just going to add it now these are the minimum values. Now look at this, the formula will change. CC2 to CC342. Now two is obviously right up here. Here it is, two. And similarly, it is done for each of the column. Now you can do it for the maximum as well. Again, come here, here, the plus sign, drag it and move up until the end, the last column, and here it is. Now once that is done, let's see if we've got any missing values. So are there any missing values? So how do we do this? It's equal to count blank. So you can count the number of empty cells in a specified range of cells. So if you've got empty cells and this is how you represent your missing values, you will get your missing values. Now what's the range? Again, A2, A342 parenthesis close enter there are no missing values similarly see the plus sign now I can drag it and drop it here are there any missing values well no I don't think so no no missing values here so this is how you can have minimum maximum and missing values similarly you can have average of these variables here as well let's say I want to average out vision 1 2 3 4 and I want it here for each respondent. So what you can do is just come over here, right click, insert. So it will add a column before this particular column because I right clicked here. So let's say I name it VIS is equal to average, parenthesis open. Now these four make up average. So I select them M2 to P2, parenthesis closed. Now here is the average for this particular construct that you can later use maybe in his process macro or whatever other variable or if you want to put it in descriptive statistics. Now look at this. Obviously there are no values so we do not need this. Just delete them or the rest is fine. Now I want to average out vision. Overall average. Now this average was for each respondent. 
Now, if I want to average out vision, what I will do is, let's say mean value. So the average was, let's say I want the average for each of the indicator. And this will give me the average for vision, the, the composite construct as well. So they start, the indicator starts from M. You can have the average for age as well. Let's say I put it in here is equal to average. And it starts off with M2 to M3, 3, 4, 2. Because this is column M and this is 3, 4, 2. All good. Press enter. Now this is the average for VIS1. And similarly drag it, move it up until the end, the last indicator. And here are the average scores for each one of the indicators. Now you can obviously reduce the decimal points if you want. Just right click on it, format cells, number, three decimal points is good enough. Okay. Now this is how you get the average. You can have average for each respondent and then later use this data, let's say in his process macro. And similarly, if you want for development, just after the last item, right click, insert, and it will add a column here. Let's say DEV is equal to average, average of, select all these. Do not drop the mouse button. You can just simply drag and drop up until the last one and then press enter, all done. Select the top, the first one where the formula is applied. Now you want to fill all these rows with this formula. Just simply hover your mouse at this spot here, the dot here, and it will give you this plus sign in black, double click, and the formula is replicated on all rows. Moving on, obviously it will replicate it up until there is some data, so you do not need this. You can simply manually delete it, or drag it and drop it until this last row. Now, finally, let's say I want to assess the respondent's misconduct. Now, I want to assess whether the respondent did read my questionnaire or not. So what I can do is, after the last indicator, I add a column here. And the first respondent is equal to standard deviation. So click here, standard deviation, and it starts off with where are my indicators. Here are my indicators. Here are my indicators. So select the first one, drag it up until the last one. But the problem here is I've, I've added one more formula. What I've done is I've added mean values here. So it's, it's always a good idea to do your standard deviation thing before you add your mean values. So let's say I delete it for now. Move up to the start. Let's say I delete it for now delete and development delete moving on let's say is equal to standard deviation double click and it starts off here these are my indicators for latent variables it's only the latent variables i'm going to add and that's about it the indicators for latent variables and once they are done, press enter, again, select the cell where the formula was applied, over your mouse around this spot here, this dot, double click it, and the formula is replicated. Now once the formula is replicated, what you need to do is, you need to sort it, smallest to largest, expand the selection, otherwise all your data is mixed up. So once you expand it, start it, and again, we do not need this because obviously the formula did extend up until these formula rows here. So let's for now, let's delete it quickly. Delete. And look at this. For now, let's remove this one as well here. Now, are there any standard deviation values? This is your standard deviation values less than 0.25. No, there aren't any. So this means that there is very little respondent misconduct. So although there are few values, these values here, but the recommended value is 0.25. So this shows there is no respondent misconduct. So this is how you can clean your data in Excel. 
let me remove these for now just to make it clear here it is so this is how you can use ms excel to find out the minimum maximum missing average and standard deviation values for your data now let's say i've got some missing values let's say my maximum values is out of range let's say there are issues with my data now how do i solve these issues in my data in order to do so we have to search the values within the data for example let's say look at this here tenure and within tenure i've got this value here 99 now this is visible here but let's say when i reviewed my results i got a value of 99 in tenure but i can't see the column here so the best option is select your column and freeze it go to view freeze panes freeze stop row so if you come down here you will get to know that the maximum value is 99 well there could be other values as well let's say 56 so nobody has a tenure of 56 years maximum you can have let's say 40 years or 45 years now this data was collected in banks it could not be over 40 years or 45 years if if a person started at 20 and retired at 65 could be the case so let's say we keep the upper threshold to 45 so what you can do is select this column here the column which you think have problems go to home go to conditional formatting highlight cell rules so anything greater than 45 shall be highlighted press ok and is there anything greater than 45 look at this 99 99 99 99 so these are problematic values so you have to go back to your questionnaire if it is manually filled go back to your questionnaire and see what was the response of respondent number seven why am i saying seven not eight because it is n minus one one two three four five six seven and it's always recommended to number your questionnaires that are collected in hard form so is there a tenure there or is this a missing value so are you representing missing values by 99 if that is the case then your data is appropriate now otherwise if that's not the case just go back to the questionnaire and see what it is and then see what the correct value is it may be 9 or it may be 19 whatever the case is otherwise you can keep it as missing values where 99 represents a missing value similarly you can do it for other constructs as well finally let's say we've got blank values that are missing values in our data let's say i've got this one here this one here this one here and with the count blank function we found that there are empty cells that is missing values now how do we tackle these missing or blank values how to find out where are these blank values so what you can do is maybe select all of your data set but just simply clicking control a go to find and select go to special and from the dialog box click blanks here press ok and your blank values are selected here some of them are here now in order to highlight it what you can do is click here and let's say i want to highlight it in blue color and now you will see your blank values you can simply reduce the size just to see where they are here they are so these are the blank values now go get this questionnaire here if we say n minus one so fifth questionnaire your tenth questionnaire and your 17th questionnaire get them see if the respondent did mark and you fail to load it for whatever reason just change the value and add it now moving on once you have corrected these similarly you can ascend, assess the mean values and see if the means are maybe very high similarly you can assess the minimum and maximum values for your metric variables that is the items representing the constructs so once you have corrected the data obviously you need to delete these rows here just right click them delete them let's say these are deleted and this one as well here no need 
that's about it yes you can save it and then import it in smart pls or any other software that you're using for your data analysis i hope this session would have helped you understand how to identify data entry errors in microsoft excel and how to solve them thank you very much